Femis has said this, that he said it in Igbo, that he also Melari, a Higia, behind Melomai, Caleb. What others did to us are many, but what we did to ourselves is even more. I want you to address this issue of blaming others. It's not, it's not just about, this is very common amongst mm-hmm. evil people, mm-hmm. blaming others for the evil problem. For so unfairly. Yeah, failure to do things. I came to America and I blamed all of you in America for the state of affairs back home. The fact that we are dying today is as a result of the docility of those of you in America. And I'm sure that some of you go to the Rubai churches, so when we're talking to you about freedom, what concerns you is um, what your pastor will think of you. If I attend a girlfriend protest, what will our daddy say about it? That is your concern as an evil person. Going to one of these uh, wretched Yoruba um, 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 churches. The same thing may also happen with your congregation. I have not spared your hands in the other land, you should know that very well. I have not spared your governors who are complicit in the murder and killing of our people. I have not spared those of them that claim that their elders that promoted by foreign interest to represent our people just so that we can be controlled via this process they have in our land. I speak out against injustice wherever I find it. I don't condone evil. That is why evil run from me. What you need to understand is this. We are the architects of our own problem, but you must also appreciate that we lost a war. And having stolen everything we had via a war, you know that the 20 pound um, 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 payment to each other family after the war. They continue to support Fulani in the killing and subjugation of other people. It's as if because they lost the money and quite states to the Fulani is that everybody must also lose something to the Fulani. That's how I see it. Or else there is no justification as to why the Yoruba Muslims must be supporting this murderous regime the way they're doing. It is evil, and we condemn it in its entirety until our people wake up. Because when I criticize them, they find an excuse or reason not to support IPOB. Our people must rise up. Biafra doesn't belong to even IPOB. Talk less of what I'm doing. Like myself, it belongs to all of us. Maybe your children will rise up one day to become very important people in Biafra. That is what I need all of you in America to consider. Not always. The, in America, they've been killing you, haven't they? You are slaves here for 200 years without pay. Now they're asking for pay at the Congress. The police kill you all the time. They stop and search you for no reason. Why don't you get angry and go back home? We are still here, eating hamburger and pizza every day. We also eat uh, on the news. This is a fake one, then. This one is uh, too much fertilizer in it. GM food, you eat here. Now, you are so uh, you you are angry with what the man the colonel says with what IPOB is doing, but in America they are killing black people every day. Why uh, can't that anger drive you to pack your things and go? They assault you every day. They call you nigger. They call you all sorts Hey, you are still here. You kill when you go to American embassies abroad. The kids from here to high heavens. You still want to come to where they call you a nigger. You want to come to where they are oppressing you. You want to come to a place where a police can stop and perhaps shoot you dead. You don't take your time. You, you find uh, what I say offensive. That when close plan when they're killing you, you don't find any offensive. No, people people protest here. There is the Black Lives Matter movement. People are doing when things about. They stand up and say the American flag. I sing, I sing the anthem. No, people protest. I mean, no, 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 I'm asking you. After protesting, that my my what I'm trying the point I'm making is after protesting, you're still here. Yeah, there probably people will make their own personal decisions. Why don't you protest and still support IPOB? You see, you, you see what I call the hypocrisy of our reason. Hypocrisy very good one. And that is what I do not like. I like people who are consistent on the game all the time. We take corrections. I'm not infallible and a human being for goodness sake. I may get it wrong sometimes. But when I have the benefit of a wise counsel, I consider it. 
All right, we'll take a break uh, one more time. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about uh, what happened when you were arrested in Nigeria and all those other sort of things. The third part of our interview is brought to you by Iroko Post Books, publishers of This American Lifestyle. Don't come to America without reading it. But if you have come without reading it, read it to know what to expect. And if you are already receiving the expected, read it to know how to escape them. Additional support came from the estate of George Ezeke in New Rochelle, New York. Welcome back. Uh, we are having a very interesting conversation with Martin Namdekano, the leader of uh, the Indigenous People of Biafra and the director of Radio Biafra. So, uh, you, when we were talking, you kept uh, referring to uh, Buhari as Jibra. I know that you were the first person to say that Buhari died. Um, we've seen Buhari come back uh, from treatment and, and people, people have moved away from that. It appears as if um, you are still the only one who is still insisting that this person is not Buhari, even though the way he talks, the way he behaves, the even the policy, the, the, it's the same thing. Nothing has changed. It, I mean, in terms of what you, what makes you think that you stick to the point of this your argument that this is not good? Because he hasn't changed. The Jubri like now hasn't changed. Yeah. And do you also know that three people who were responsible for the recruitment of Jubril from Khartoum are all dead? The three Nigerian um, embassy staff that recruited Jubril and Minu Al Sudan, they are all dead. They were murdered. Are you aware of that? Dead. Three staff from the embassy of Nigeria in Khartoum, they are dead. Murdered. Buried. Because we are black people, we don't like anything that exercises our brain. You know, we're very lazy. And by nature, we're very lazy people. We don't want anything that will make us to go out of our comfort zone to imagine the, the unimaginable. Look at the ear of the man you have here there now. As of today, go through his pictures in the last few days. You will see that his left ear is all complete. All complete. But we know that the dead Buhari's left ear lobe is missing. Why can't people, and even when you go to court, they ask for evidence or incontrovertible proof. I have a mark here now, and can you see it? Somebody else comes and says, I'm going on the can without this mark. Will you believe that person? Well, maybe, maybe they, they is, is, um, is covered up. I mean, covered up with what? Um, Makeup. <laughs> yeah, why can't you ask me? The name the camera I know used to have a mark here. If you're wearing makeup, sir, can you please remove it? Let's see it. Do you understand? It is that is that is the issue of Jubrail and the dead Buhari encapsulates everything that is wrong with the reasoning of a black person. That is why Africa is poor. I mean, yes, the people see it as a conspiracy theory. It's, uh, and it's everywhere. It's in America. Yes. How, it's can it, how can it be a conspiracy? I'm telling you that the Buhari, the dead Buhari, had problem with his ear. Why can't you look at the one there now to say is the ear complete or not? You know it's complete. You know it's not Buhari. You know that Buhari, the right incisors, is longer than the left one. I don't want to go into that because when I do the yeah. final expo, say, yeah. I'll expose him even more. And I, I, I've given him an, an expo now. They're going to do something to his team. <laughs> now, the other Buhari was an old man. This is a young boy. I don't know, up to 50. This, this oh my goodness, it's a young man. You saw the pictures during the campaign. He took off his glasses. The old Buhari that you used to know. When was it recorded that he took off his glasses? Ever before. When it comes because you saw the young boy. But because we are black, cowardly, and very timid, nobody could stand up to say that this is, and I'll tell you why. Those that control your brain, the Yoruba media and Yoruba pastors, they've told you that your Lord and your masters. Actually, I said to our people, you see the Yoruba media and the pastors, they control our brain and the way we reason. It's not just that now. If, if your theory is true, that yes. means that the vice president, the wife, the... Uh, 
even, even our governors from Eastern Nigeria, they all know the old Buhari and that the place they, they are meeting is not the, they, they are all part of the conspiracy. Is that what you're saying? Everybody? Yes, they are all part of it. But our passenger cannot say it. They cannot say it. Because they are afraid of the implosion that will happen. They are, they, they are trading on fear. Britain will tell you the reason why we don't want to expose uh, uh, um, Jibril is because uh, uh, West Africa will be destabilized. That's the job of the Trump. That if you do anything in Nigeria, the whole region will implode and, uh, you know, there will be chaos and anarchy everywhere. We don't have the resources to cope with over 80 million refugees flooding Europe and America from West Africa. So even if America and Britain are part of uh, the, the, the loop, what about Israel? What about other countries in the world? Because it's not the duty. If you present a goat as your president, Israel will accept it. That's international voting protocol. If you present a chicken as your president, they will say, hello, hello, hello chicken, president of Nigeria. Yeah, what I'm saying is that it will have late from... Uh, it has late. It is every... It, uh, they, you see, we shouldn't expect somebody to always validate each and every issue for us before we believe it is true. What we are doing was what I used to think when I was little growing up, that unless something is manufactured in a foreign land, that thing is not original. That's how the whole Abame thing came into being. If you see something you don't like, it says Abame. But if it's made by white people, then it's okay. There's something that's happened. Now, we need for me now to be very, to be acceptable. Do you know what I need to do is to go and get a white friend to follow me all over the place. They say he has a white friend. Your friends who are against that baby won't become interested because he's got a white friend. We always need white people to say we are doing well before we accept the obvious. What I'm saying to you is this. Only a fool will stand up and say that that thing in Asa Rock being remote controlled by Abakiari is Buhari. Now, as a man with family, if I want something from your garage, I want to go there, or say your wife wants to go to your garage to take something, will your wife go to your next door neighbor to help her with opening your garage? No. She will come to you, isn't it? Yeah. So when there were issues of insecurity and banditry in Zamfara, why did Aisha Buhari not go to the commander in chief? Why did she go to Burata? Why, why, why was it that she was, she was asking for mosquito nets from other agencies? And not, when your husband is the commander in chief of the entire country, you are appealing to other people. Well, she has done that before. Um, she went to BBC before, I said, before, before and criticized uh, the husband. When the husband was dead, she only said it because the husband was dead. And, and if, if you people persist, with this whole jubilee of a thing. Why can't he still, I think they've cost him well enough now, to speak for food? Every interview is controlled. Every meeting is controlled by Abakiari and his gang. And they are preying on the fear of the people. Atiku knew that Buhari was Why would Atiku say that? He won't say it because it was part of, part of the original arrangement. They wanted, because my good friend, Fanny Kayode, wrote a very excellent piece where he, he actually outlined and argued quite convincingly the reason why he believes that Buhari cannot last out eight years in office. And then they went back and said, okay, if that's what they are thinking, Buhari must remain in power for eight years. And that's what they did. Okay, let's let's get to other things because we don't have a lot of time. Um, when you were arrested and detained in 2015, uh, amongst the evidence that the government had against you was yes. this video of you talking to Ibo people at the World Ibo Congress yes. in uh, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. where you told them that um, they should, you know, just like you're saying, they should contribute and that you need to buy guns to, to fight Nigeria. And there was this other video where you said that, you know, if they don't give you Biafra, you will turn Nigeria into Somali. Um, if you were the president of Biafra, I know you have an interest in being that. Mm -hmm. And somebody is demanding for arms abroad mm -hmm. uh, to fight Biafra. Mm -hmm. So, some, let's say someone who is uh, part of uh, Arochipu mm -hmm. Republic, break away, trying to break away from Biafra. I just want you to, you know, 
what will you do? What will you do to such a fellow if you if you hear that the person is traveling to Ghana to looking for arms to come and what would you do? I'll do nothing. Is he fighting me? Has he landed on my shores to fight? Well, well, that that is only what happened because you landed <laughs> and you were arrested. If the person lands in Biafra, what mm -hmm. would you do? Was arms given to me when I came to America? Oh no, I'm, I'm not. I'm just saying that. Exactly. <laughs> that, 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 that was. But, but that, will you? Will you? Will you just? I want to. It is. It is not my job. Yeah, to do that. If not, you'll be going about arresting everybody that's ever said anything that you don't agree with. People can say things. And unless there is incontrovertible evidence to back up the fact that the threat was carried out, you do nothing. How many times have you told your child I'm killing today? <laughs> you have not. <laughs> no. Your parents ever said to you? Yeah, 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 my dad generation, yeah, they could say that. But <laughs> no, 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 no. You're not killing? No. Exactly. <laughs> so you were saying that your dad should have been arrested? <laughs> huh? No, I mean that. For coming to the house. <laughs> when he was sleeping in the morning, he said, I'm going, I'm going to kill you today when I come back. And as soon as he stepped foot through the front door, he is now shot dead. Because he said you killed him, we didn't quite know what you were going to do. No, no, okay, okay. I, I got the point. Now, well, let me ask you, what's the difference between Namdekano that was arrested on October 14, 2015, and the one released on April 28, 2007? More hardcore, more determined, more militant, and ever willing to give everything giveable to achieve that. Now, for five months from April 2017 to September, you were partly, you could say, a free man, not totally free, and you received support from thousands of young people uh, everywhere in the lower Niger, so, 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 so lower Niger. What did you learn during that period? First, there's something like Lower Niger. Okay, well, I Lower I Niger say, is a name coined by cowards yeah. to, to, to avoid talking about Biafra. No, I wanted to say it's, it's, a, it's a cowardly name. Who the name is Biafra. Okay. Yes, okay. say from Biafra. Okay, from Biafra. Now, not just from young people, that, that seems to be this categorization that is you know, fed by the okay. media. Okay. The need to say, you know, it's only young people following him. The town hall meetings in America, were they young people? Yeah, everybody. Uh, exactly. Everybody is part and parcel of IPOB and what we are trying to achieve. Perhaps uh, sometimes, you know, the natural jealousy of a black man, the destructive envy that comes with our very mere existence, uh, tend to contradict that. But it happens and we have to live with it. I wasn't free. I know I said that way, and I knew that there were conditions. But you were moving around. I was moving around yeah. because I decided to move around. Not because I was allowed to. Okay. I moved okay. around. They tried to stop me in Ebony. I broke their cordon, almost six of them. Military, police, uh, mobile police, everybody else. I don't want people to get the wrong impression. But I want them to know that I am not somebody you can stop from agitating for their front to their front comments. The alternative is my death. I will keep doing what I'm doing until they are thrown out. Nobody, no force on this earth can stop that. That's what I want everybody to know. Nobody can stop it. Now, no, but what, what did you learn during that period? You know, like when you go to a and you have thousands of young people. Millions, not yeah. thousands. Okay. We Millions. shut down towns when we go okay. to it. So what did you learn? What, what, was, what did you learn about yourself, about your people? Is that our people want freedom. And that our people will always reward those who stand firm for them in truth and in honesty. They will give anything to protect and to defend every person. That is why people call me Savior, Lord, Supreme Leader. Is 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 a way to antagonize those that don't believe that what we have accomplished is um, is achievable. Now, when you were released from prison, you were once quoted to have said that the government of Nigeria offered you oil blocks, uh, mansions in Dubai, five eastern states to take and move out and form your Biafra, mm -hmm. and you refused. Mm -hmm. Instead, you de demanded the inclusion of Benue and River states. Yes. Now, don't you don't you think that 
you know, there's an alternative way you could have done it, which would be to take the five states, get the Biafra, start with the five states, and the, in 10 years' time, according to the, the other states, we say we want to join Biafra. Because uh, perhaps a lot of people are not quite conversant about Aburi Accord and what happened. It's called goalpost shifting. I know Nigeria more than it knows itself. That's true. When they give you something, you say, okay, I agree. They come back and cut something else from it. They keep cutting it until you disagree. So you were not sure they that they were allowing you? They will not do it. There is, there is their way. That's how they behave. They did to Juba Aburi. That's what they did. Oh, do you want this? Yes. Somebody will call him on the phone and say, harden the terms and conditions. Do you want this? Uchuku said yes. They said, harden it. Do you want this? Eventually, there was no agreement. Will you, will you tell us who, who, who came to you and made that? I, 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 ever since I've been saying it, has anyone from the zoo come and refuted it? Yeah, because you have not mentioned No, 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 no. Have they, before when I say things, they come out and say, oh, it's not true, oh, they're doing this, oh, they're doing that. Has anyone said no? No. Because if I mention it, more serious players and partners will not trust my sense of judgment and restraint under pressure. So I would not damage my standing with governments around the world by naming names. It doesn't strike as the mark of the leader. Thank you.